Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to look at one thing that you're currently doing wrong in QuickBooks Online. My name is Aaron Patrick, I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK QuickBooks Trainer and also that QuickBooks chat. Now one of the things that I've seen crop up quite a lot is a simple mistake that everyone's making when it comes to their bank account. And that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to look at how we can make sure we're not making that mistake and also the impact of that mistake in the first place. So let's jump straight into this one and see exactly what the problem is. Okay, so on this bank account then, if I jump into my banking section now, it's a brand new client this one and on my banking section I have 60 transactions to deal with nice and straightforward now one tips that I always tell people is making sure copy bank detail is set to memo is already ticked that way that when you post a transaction you can quickly see how that's done and let's see what I mean by that so QuickBooks itself is doing what it can to try and automatically guesstimate what's going on so here we've got motor running costs going to shell we've got staples and it's very easy for people just to go, actually, QuickBooks is doing a really good job here at trying to memorize, trying to think about what's right. So most of the time we can trust. And as long as it's not going to uncategorize expenses, which we all know is the one thing we don't want it to go to, the majority of the time it looks spot on to us. So if I was happy that WH Smith was right, and Shell was right, and British Telecom was right, then I'm confirming to QuickBooks that everything's correct. And as I start going down, those transactions I've just done, I've started to go green, basically because I'm now telling QuickBooks that I was right that the assumptions made is going to the right place. So let's look at the impact of that. Now, to do that, I'm gonna duplicate my tab so that I can have two tabs and jump between them. And in that second tab, I'm gonna jump in my reports and have a look at my profit and loss. All I'm gonna do is put it to all dates so we can see what's happening. And as you can see, I'm starting to get items in my motor running costs, items in my printing, item telephone. If I jump into any of these, then for me to do a quick analysis to make sure everything's right, I look down here and I see the memo is shell and the account is motor running expense. So I'm pretty confident that that's right. And I can go through each one of these categories and keep reading each one and looking at the account. And that's really sensible. That's a way for me to make sure that things have been posted to the right one. So I haven't accidentally posted something to somewhere. Problem is, is if I start getting multiple items in here. So if I carry on doing the same thing, so I'm going banking and I'm like, yeah, I'm happy with that one as well. And that one, that one seems right, so on and so forth. If I would just keep clicking them ones and then go back to my report, then again, I can go in, click on them, and I can kind of go through and keep checking them. But the problem is now, I'm having to go through each one of these to check that I've got everything right. But look at this as a trick. If I create another duplicate tab and we look at another report and we look at this, expenses by supplier. Now, if I was to use the supplier option up here, look, Now that they've now got under the name category, they've got the right supplier against them, then when I rerun this element here, I can see each one of the suppliers in the right place. And then all I need to do is click on any of these and my quick analysis is BP, BP, motor running costs. Let's look at one that's got a few more transactions in. So shell, 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 motor running costs. So it makes it easier for me to make sure that everything's been posted correctly. I know if I had made a mistake and I had done a problem, then your accountant will quickly be able to amend that for you really simply. So how do I get around putting that in quickly? Well, there's tips and tricks to make it de dead straightforward. But what I would do is I would, if I'm posting lots of transactions like this, I put in description column, like for example, all these Audi costs. I would do batch actions, modify. I would then set everything to Audi and then uh, maybe make a brand new one for this motor lease. Apply and add. Same then with my BPs. Now it's seen that I should always put BP against it. So let's, and let, but it's gone to uncategorized. So let's modify selected and explain that all of these should be motor. I could do the same with telephone, but this time I want to modify selected and I want to say that this should always go to a brand new supplier called BT.
Now we've done in previous videos ways that you can use rules to speed this up as well. And when you do rules, you can then also say what the supplier or the customer is going to be at that point. So as we're smashing through these, I've got most of these done. And if like that, I've done all 60 transactions really quickly. So it's taken me roughly five minutes to get those six transactions in. And remember, being the first time I've had to do a bit more work for setting up supplies, setting up categories. So using the quick batch option is gonna make things nice and quickly for me. But the benefit of doing it this way is the fact that when I run my report for PL, everything looks like it's in the right categories, apart from here on categorized expense. And I've got my PC world has gone astray. So as I look on my PL, you can see that everything seems to be posted in, but how do I check this? Well, one of the ways is to click in each individual one and make sure, or if I use that report, if I use my expenses by supply summary, and let's just do all dates so we can see everything, then it's a really easy way. I can jump into my Audi. Everything's been posted to motor lease. Everything says Audi, perfect. I can jump into BP. Everything says BP, everything says Monta, exactly where I want it. And then I can keep going down this list and this is my confidence. And at the end, I've got insurance, UK and British Telecom. Well, I know British Telecom should be with BT. Move that over. I know WH Smith as well. And I can do that with my AXA as well. So now I've got confidence. I've got a way of going through each one of these and it can quickly show staples, staples, and the amounts there. And it means I can quickly have confidence in the items that's there. Again, whereas if I was just looking through here and I clicked on motor running expenses, I then got to make that judgment each time. Tesco, Tesco, back, motor expenses. Yeah, that seems right. BP, BP, yeah, okay, shell, shell. And I'm having to go through each individual transaction. When I put it all in to expense by supply summary, it's really quick and easy. Plus if you've got an accountant and they're having to go through this, their life's gonna be easy as well. And they'll even be able to adjust things on maths for you if you need them to. So don't be afraid to reach out to your accountant. If you've gone through all your PC worlds and every one of these is going to the wrong one, just talk to them, they can get that quickly amended for you. Also, if you've that registered, don't forget the importance of smart scanning your return. When you smart scan your return, QuickBooks is gonna look at the data you've put in there and try and spot any errors. Well, if you've put your payee in, then it's going to be able to find more inconsistent VAT codes. For example, if you've gone to PC World and you've bought seven items in that period and all but one of them had been posted to 20%, it will pop up as a inconsistent VAT code for you to review. Therefore, you can check and make sure if that's correct. The only way it's gonna spot that though, if you put your supply details in, when you put the transaction into QuickBooks. And there we have it, one quick adjustment that's gonna give you the confidence you're putting everything in the right place. One thing we have wrong here is if I was gonna post this manually is the word optional. Personally, that word optional should never be included. We should have a way of making it mandatory to put your supplier in there. That's gonna make your life easier. That's gonna mean that your accountant, if you do have one, is gonna be able to check that data more accurately and be able to spot any potential errors easier for you. And it just means that you will be able to spot things yourself as well. Also, with that whole teaching QuickBooks and telling QuickBooks and everything else, it's gonna be something that will actually help. And a little sneak peek into what us as accountants are getting. As accountants, we have the options to do what's called a month end review. And one of those is transactions without payees. So that one there, hasn't got a payee in there, and that is basically telling me a red flag that I might want to investigate that transaction. The less of these that you have, easier it is for your accountant to go through those books, find the mistakes, and make sure that you're paying everything correctly. So that was it. Nice, quickly, straightforward way of making sure that you have everything right within QuickBooks. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have done, we've got more videos like this on this channel, so think about subscribing. It's been a pleasure to do this video for you. Next time we're gonna have a look at some even more simplistic ways of making sure that you get confidence in those bookkeeping. Because that's what this is all about. For you to get the most out of QuickBooks, you need to be confident that what you're putting into QuickBooks is correct. So that when it starts doing its clever stuff like cash flow forecast and everything else, you can be confident on the reports that are coming out. My name's been Aaron Patrick. Again, it's been a pleasure to do this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.
it's real Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're same bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah